Well, I've been here 13 years, and this last 12 months, there have been a lot of changes on this depot. Um, no, I'm reasonably happy. As long as somebody wants to still use trains, I suppose we'll still be here. At the end of the day, we're all in the same, uh, we're all in the business of running the railway. I've been involved with freight and train loads for more than 30 years. Uh, over that time, I've seen the train load freight product uh, develop into a service which meets the needs for heavy haulage of the major industrial companies in this country. The set of wagons we see behind us are an excellent example of the merry-go-round service of that kind of product. Why are we setting up this company or business within the railways called train load freight? Well, really simply to organise ourselves so that we can be even more specialist and distinctive ourselves within the railways in sustaining and improving that product. There's no great change. What we're simply setting out to do is doing what we've been doing well, but simply better and better. A bit of history. 150 years ago, building railways was one of the great commercial opportunities. Fortunes were made and lost, and the railways transformed our country. The success of the Industrial Revolution depended on the railway's ability to move heavy loads across the country. When the railways were nationalised in 1948, they still kept much the same geographical boundaries as the previous independent companies. The Great Western Railway became Western Region and so on. It was the first of a number of major changes which made little practical difference to most people working the railways. The 60s were a time of change and rationalisation. Better roads and the new motorway system challenged the ability of the railways to carry freight. But, just as 150 years ago, in one field, nobody did, or does it better. The heavy stuff. Freight capability on the railways took a major step forward in the 1960s with the development of trainload technology in the shape of block or company trains. This was the period that saw the introduction of freight liner trains and, most important, merry-go-round. Fixed formation trains of HAA wagons serving pits and power stations in a continuous circle. The railways were able to arrest something of a slow decline in one way at least. The roads, aircraft, couldn't shift really heavy loads in such quantity with such little fuss. Moving materials such as coal, steel, construction materials and oil around the country was a problem which never appeared to be one because the railways were there. If the railways weren't in existence, we couldn't survive because there, was, there is no way that the volumes of coal that we move, which is something in excess of a million tonnes a week, could be moved by any other form of transport without uh, an overwhelming effect on the environment. 50% of the stone made in the quarry goes out by rail, probably nearer 60%, so it is very important. Where does trainload freight come from? Rail freight encompassed an enormous range of different freight activities. There's not much in common between moving trainloads of coal to a power station and carrying wagon loads of pet food, cider or beer. So now we're organised in a much more logical way designed to enable each of us to exploit our strengths and align ourselves professionally with our customers. Rail Freight Distribution, RFD, created in 1988, now handles all intermodal transport, containers and wagon loads, international traffic and all distribution-based goods at the lighter end of industry. All kinds of things, and they compete very directly with the roads. Their real opportunity will come with the opening of the Channel Tunnel, when a single train load of mixed goods can move very quickly across very long distances. Train load freight, that's us, moves whole train loads of heavy materials. Some of the distances are quite short. It is regular, it's reliable, 
It's profitable, it's unique, and we're good at it, despite the competition. That's us. That's trainload freight. Coal, construction, metals, petroleum. The original railway companies were built around their main routes, many of them based on London. And since nationalisation, the regions have broadly followed the same areas of responsibility. This traditional railway geography actually bore no relation to the way freight really moved around the country. So what's happening now is a much more logical division of the same pie. British Rail is divided into national sectors, a horizontal division rather than the geographically based slices we've all become used to. Regional railways and network southeast tend to move passengers locally and intercity move passengers nationally. Rail freight distribution moves containers and other freight traffic nationally and internationally. And trainload freight is responsible for moving whole trainloads of freight around the country. Really, I don't think there's going to be a great deal of difference for most people. What is happening is that we're making more management sense out of the business we do. I don't see a lot of money being spent on new signposts. There certainly isn't going to be any new profit centres and the depots here are staying as they are. The very words trainload freight say what we are doing and that's really what we've got to think about now. We must see ourselves as a simplified national business and not part of a complicated regional organisation. That's the difference. That must mean a more efficient business which must be welcoming to us all, particularly our customers. A few numbers. Trainload freight will employ around 17,000 people across the country. We've 25 locomotive depots, 11 wagon depots, and 51 main train crew depots. TLF owns 2,600 miles of the 17,500 miles of track it uses each year with 250 signal boxes. Trainload freight accounts for roughly one-eighth of the total railway employees and we earn around a sixth of the total revenue. We've got around a third of the total fleet of British Rail's locomotives. TLF moves heavy materials in trainloads. The majority of our business actually comes from only 10 big customers, so we're obviously very important to each other. The railways are absolutely critical to the way we operate because our customers are concerned with the delivered price of fuel and the delivered price of, of coal depends to great measure on the transport rate and the service associated with the transport. So whoever pays the bills, whether it's ourselves or our customers, the delivered cost of the fuel and the British Rail element of that cost have got a critical effect on our own competitive position vis-à-vis -vis oil and gas. Trainload coal is Britain's major coal carrier. We move around 75 million tonnes a year. More than 250 trains a day to power stations, steel works, cement works, chemical plants. It's not too much to say that the country couldn't work properly without us. Trainload construction is involved in most of the largest construction projects in the land. That means that we're helping to build something that's going to make the most difference to our partners in rail freight distribution, the Channel Tunnel. One of the biggest growth areas of the trainload construction business is in the transport of waste products. Trainload metals move nearly 20 million tonnes a year. We're the biggest haulier serving the British steel industry. We're involved in the whole cycle of steel production, from transport of iron ore, through carrying molten metal at 450 degrees centigrade, to moving the finished product, for example, steel girders, and finally moving scrap metal around the country. Then the whole process starts again. Our main movement is raw material flow from Immingham, where we have a bulk terminal discharge facility for raw material of iron ore and coal coming through to the Scunthorpe Works here. 
total tonnage of, of ore amounts to five million tonnes and coal two and a half million tonnes, which really means that the obvious route for that material is to come by rail. Trainload petroleum moves over 10 million tonnes of oil products every year. We are used by practically every significant oil company. The traffic is widely spread, and most of it travels between 100 and 200 miles. Safety and quality of service are extremely important. There's no second chance here. We can't afford accidents, and the customers have several other options if they don't like the way we work. The main reason that we went for rail distribution as opposed to the other forms, and we did have the option of the other forms of distribution, pipelines, sea movements, uh, was because of the flexibility that rail gives us. Of course, the four areas of business could not exist without the business unit to provide and run the support and infrastructure for the whole of trainload freight. We have our own personnel and finance departments. We own and maintain our own rolling stock and locomotives. We have our own engineering organisation. We are a national company within British Rail. More than anything else, locomotives, wagons, track, maintenance depots. The key factor in our future is going to be people. You and our customers. Let's quite properly take the customer first. It may be obvious, but they are people too. And they are going through much the same kind of rapidity of change, some uncertainty about the future, and so on, as we all are. So bear that in mind when you relate to them, when you meet them in power stations, at terminals and wherever, because what we ought not to do is give them any more problems. What we give them is a seamless service. We give them solutions. Now, how can we continue to do that and do it even better? Well, I don't want to make it sound so simple, but in, in many ways it is. It's attention to detail getting things we do, do for them, right first time. And when things do occasionally go awry, making sure we respond flexibly to the situation. If we can get all that right, then I think I can assure you that you're going to be working within a business, within the railway, that will give you a good and secure and long-term future. And it will be a business that you'll be proud to work in and where the customers will esteem the service that you provide.